Hi, this is just a little bit before we kick off into the video to basically say to you guys, this was filmed well before social, iso uh, social isolating, social distancing and all that other stuff. In fact, we filmed it the same day as the Citroen, the Rolls Royce and a few other bits actually, which we're not sure if we're going to put on the channel or not. I'm just uh, deciding what we do with them. Anyway, I really hope you enjoy this video. It's a bit different. It's a bit weird, but hey ho, let's crack on and have a look at a Mercedes commercial vehicle. Hi guys, it's Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm back in a Mercedes 308D. So we did the Freight Rover last year, you guys absolutely loved it. So today I'm back and I'm doing this Mercedes. Now it started its life as a fruit and veg van down in London and now it's here in the Midlands and it's taken a bit of retirement, it's somebody's kind of side vehicle, it's a bit of a bizarre one and I got offered it and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it because it's so different. So we've come down today and we're going to take it out we're going to treat it like the normal i drive classic reviews we're going to have a look around the outside we're going to pop in have a look inside the cab which looks quite modern actually and we're going to have a quick look around in here as well but all in all it's a bit of a different one for i drive classic so i hope you enjoy it um <laughs> i'm really excited to go and drive it it'll be one of the biggest things i've ever driven so uh keep your fingers crossed for me that i don't panic and uh let's start by having a look around the outside here we are with a Mercedes T1, or as you may know it, a 308D. I'll hold my hands up and say to you that before preparing this video, vehicles such as these were something I didn't really know much about. So I feel like making this video has been a point of discovery, not just for you guys at home, but for me too. Now, before I tell you the specifics on the model, it's worth mentioning that whilst this is called a 308D, it sits within the TN series, which filters down into the T1 series. Now the TM vehicles were launched in April 1977, but if you're watching from abroad, you might know this as a Bremen Transporter or a Togo Atlas. However, in the majority of the market and in the UK, these were known as TN or T1N, or sometimes just as the T1. The TN in the name stood for Transporter New, and it sits within the van, truck, transporter, commercial sector of the Mercedes-Benz range. So when I told several people that I was going out to test drive a classic Mercedes, I don't think they were quite expecting this. Now the vehicle you see before us here today sits within that T1 range, which was available in many different guises, and you could have chosen everything from a minibus, one fitted with a cargo box body or a flat cargo bed and double cab versions were available too. The vehicle you see here today is registered as a box van. Now being so versatile it lent itself perfectly to a camper van conversion when it was in its van format and was the preferred conversion by many due in part to the fact that it was larger than the Volkswagen Transporter. With so many uses and known for being such a tough vehicle, it won't surprise you to know that the TN T1 was in production until 1995. And with this being an L registered vehicle, so you can see there on the plates L registered, which means it was registered in 1994, it sits well at the end of the production run. When the range was introduced, original lineup contained two engines and four weight classes, and you could have chosen from the 207D, the 208, the 307D and the 308, and the D model sported the four-cylinder diesel engine with a 2404cc and 65 horsepower capability, and the 208 and 308 models were fitted with the four-cylinder petrol, which was 2307cc and 85 horsepower. The 308D you see here today was fitted with a 2.3cc engine, it's diesel as you've probably guessed by the D after the 308 and the 308Ds were produced from 1989 through to 1995 within that T1 range. It boasts a max power of 82 horsepower but interestingly I wasn't able to find any top speeds online, although it's hardly something you're going to be racing around a track or a motor anytime soon, especially fully loaded. However, I'm sure there's a few tradesmen at home that will uh, <laughs> be quick to tell me what the top speed they've achieved actually is. Now, you might be wondering why there were petrol and diesel models. And in fact, the diesel massively outsold the petrol, with almost 90% of buyers opting for the diesel model. The petrol engine models tended to end up as ambulances, fire engines and vans which were used in colder climates whereas the more popular diesel model was preferred by many commercial buyers and firms due to its low fuel consumption and reliability. 
Interestingly, though, when these were launched in the UK, you could only get a diesel version, which was an interesting choice for Mercedes to make, considering that the UK market was 80% petrol. And with that in mind, they added petrol models for the UK buyer from 1982 onwards. And even more interestingly, they then saw their sales spike in these models by 80%, just based on that one move alone. They weren't known for being slow movers, movers either, and in, 19, in the 1970s, the TN T1 vehicles were one of the fastest diesel vans towards the end of the decade. Now, like most good manufacturers and most successful cars or vehicles, they didn't rest on their early successes. And as they went through the lifespan of the range, they introduced the 407D, the 409D, the 410 in 1981, which then offered a bigger and more powerful five cylinder diesel engine. And um, the engine wasn't entirely new, by the way, because it had been used in the 300D passenger car. And in the earlier T1 series, vehicles had been produced for a four speed box, which they later moved into a five speed although i haven't seen any evidence of um, an automatic transmission anywhere now in 1995 the production came to an end and it was replaced with the sprinter now though it was replaced it was still a big hit worldwide from tradesmen to police forces even being used by the hong kong police force the t-run really was a vehicle which lent itself to well whatever you wanted it to do now, I'd usually run a car or a vehicle through a website like HowManyLeft.com, but with variations of plenty and the DVLA registering things in very random ways, the website isn't always correct. However, if you add up all the figures for all the 308D models shown on the website, it does suggest that there are less than a 1,000 left, which is a bit sad considering the many thousands that were sold at the time of production. And... I guess that's where we leave it here. So there's a lot to go through. Um, I want to give you a bit of a drive out. It's going to be a bit strange, um, but I'm really excited to show you because I know that you enjoyed the last commercial vehicle we did. Uh, we're not going to be able to film from the back seat because there isn't one. So Chris is going to film from the passenger seat for me. And uh, Chris is a little bit camera shy, so we won't be doing an owner's interview today. Now, before we set off, let's start every video the way that we do. We'll have a look at the dash. We'll start the vehicle up and um, I'll give you a bit of an idea of what the gearbox is like. And spoiler, it's uh, not as exact as I would like it to be. So the dash is kind of how I expected it to be for a commercial vehicle, which is no frills, but everything you absolutely need is here. So over here, we've got the temperature temperature gauge, which is always a handy function to have. You've got your main beam, you've got your glow plug. So because this is a diesel, um, and I didn't know this actually until sh somebody showed me a diesel vehicle, you have to wait for this light to go out um, before you can start the car. You've got your indicators, your battery, your handbrake, your oil, and a mega massive um, speedo in the middle here which I absolutely love you've even got a little trip clock which I didn't realize the value of until I got in the marina and I really miss uh, the trip clock in the metro and over here you've got your fuel gauge and a clock I love a clock in a car it's one of my favorite things um, just your standard I mean look at that it's a bit a bit baggy but uh, you know what it's a commercial vehicle what do we expect so you've got your just your standard indicators over here um, now what else have we got we have got in the center we're taking a trip back in time this is a phone holder for i guess a nokia or a motorola a phone that time's forgot anyway that you probably only see in a car boot sale um over here this which i originally thought was the hazard warning um get the camera on there for you is actually the so you pull that and that puts on the interior light in the back cab so if you're in the back unloading those fruit and vegetables you've got a bit of light for you over here now here we've got um just your fan speed um so you've got it on one and two there these are your controls and this is obviously on and off down here you've got a snazzy phillips cassette player won't have been the cheapest one but absolutely fantastic we've got the hazard hazard warning light over here and we've got an ashtray but quite nicely actually it's not been filled up with cigarettes it's not been manhandled so actually it's in quite good condition now to say this is a commercial vehicle i expected it to be on mega mileage because this is a 1994 vehicle so i thought we're going to be looking at well over probably 150k at least because you think about it, it's a long time ago but actually it's not even hit 88,000 yet so it's quite low mileage um i think it's looking quite well on the outside you'll probably have noticed the paintwork isn't concourse but 
find me a commercial vehicle that hasn't been doled up to the nines um, at his concourse. Anything that's been used on the regular is going to be looking like it's been used. Um, and that, to be honest, was what I wanted to test. I didn't want to test something that looked brand new. Um, what else can I tell you about it? So the underneath is something that i definitely need to mention the underneath of the car is completely solid as well um it was something that was pointed out to me before the test which is fantastic because if you think about it it is one of the reasons that commercial vehicles have such a short lifespan is that they are used hard they're used heavy and they're used in all weathers so these vehicles sometimes and most likely tend to rust and they don't really expect to exist past that 10 year mark so it's quite exciting that in 2020 we're here testing this and we get to take it out so you might notice when we're looking around the vehicle that there's a few little nicks and bits that could be addressed but remember this didn't even cost a thousand pounds it's not the you know it's not the most well spotted vehicle on the roads anymore and it's actually it's quite interesting so now that we've had a look around the inside let's have a look at the gear pattern because it's a little bit nuts and uh, i think it's going to take my head a little bit to get around so as you can see we've got reverse first second third fourth and fifth so i'm going to put my foot on the brake so we come over we go over into reverse so it's got quite a lot of travel actually come back into neutral goodness look at that Right, down into first, felt like a right lad driving this, up in second, down into third, well across, into fourth, down into fifth, and we're done. And to be honest, although it looks a bit like, you know, stirring a, a spoon round in a bowl of soup, actually, it's quite exacting when you start putting it into gears. So, yeah, so far, it's all looking good. Handbrake as well is just over here. So everything's kind of where I'd expect it to be. Now it's time to take it out for a bit of a test drive. So, we're gonna start the car up now. And uh, as I mentioned, the glow, pli glow plug light um, over here on the dash, we do have to wait for that to go out before we start the car, uh, before we start the vehicle even. Um, so come on in and we'll get you having a look at the dash so you can see what I'm talking about. So it comes on, can you see just there? And we just have to wait for that light to go out. There you go. And now we can start the vehicle, so. The accelerator is really strange. It's really long, like a foot. <laughs> it's a bit exciting. I feel like I'm off to do some sort of delivery. I'll move somebody in, into their home. So. That sounds absolutely smashing. It sounds a little bit tractory, but you know what? I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna belt up and we're gonna go out for a drive, and I'll talk to you as we crack on. This driving position is so strange. So I'm paying a lot of attention, so I'm going to be looking straight ahead as I chat to you. And although I'm kind of, I can really put my foot down, I'm being very careful because I've got a lot of weight behind me. And whilst it's not that I don't trust the vehicle, I am a little bit frightened. Um, it's the most bizarre driving, driving, uh, I'm going to go into fourth, there we go. It's the most bizarre driving, um, driving position that I've driven in for quite some time. I feel like I'm chartering a bus. It's like, look at the size of the steering wheel. But actually, do you know what one of the weird things is? It's really responsive, uh, which I wasn't expecting because I was expecting it to be, you know, this large, large beast that I would have to really, you know, rack round corners. And one of the reasons for that is, is that this is power assisted steering. So I'm just gonna find my gears there. <laughs> um, this is honestly one of the most bizarre driving experiences I've been on in quite some time. Now, one of the reasons that this is so responsive when I'm steering it is that it has got that power assisted steering. Now, not all the vehicles that were produced up to this range have them, because this is one of the later ones before they went into the, because uh, this was replaced by the Sprinter. So they went into the Sprinters in 1995. And so this was one of the later, this was one of the later ones, because this is registered in 1994. Now as I drive it, um, it's just, oh, I wish I could have you sat next to it because it is one of the most bizarre experiences and vehicles that I've driven in quite some time. I feel, I know that I'm very high off the road because honestly it was a right struggle getting in, but I don't actually feel that high at all. And I've got a lot of headroom above me as well. So I've had to take a bit of a different driving route because I have to obviously be careful of all the all the stuff above me and stuff behind me and i keep going to check my rear view mirror which obviously i don't have but my god it's actually 
it's actually really different. I'm so I'm so excited and terrified to be out with this. It's uh, it's definitely a different one. Mercedes were known for producing bulletproof workhorses, vehicles that could really be used, vehicles that were going to last, and vehicles that were built with quality in mind. And to say that some of these vehicles, you know, were really flogged to death, they would have done thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles. Honestly, this vehicle is standing up really well to the test of time. Not only bodywork-wise, which I think looks excellent for 80k, I mean, you've seen many cars of this era that are on 80k, and their bodywork looks absolutely rubbish in comparison. It's that real German quality and efficiency that people know them for, um, and I think it really comes across in this. It's just sometimes it's a little bit bizarre trying to find the right gear. <laughs> um, and I would say that that's my only critique of the vehicle, but is that the vehicle or is it me? Let's be honest, it's probably me and I probably need to get my head around it. But if I was a tradesman, if I was a painter decorator, someone who was moving things, you know, a van driver, with all the miles that I'd be doing, I'd soon get my head around this. It's really nice to drive, it's really comfortable, because if you think about it, when these vehicles were made, they needed to be made with people that were doing a lot of mileage in mind. The vehicle is very comfortable, it's a nice seat, it's a good, I know it sounds really silly, but the seat is really well padded, it's really comfortable, the driving position is really comfortable, you've got those lovely chunky mirrors on the side so you can see exactly what's going on, which is great because you don't have your rear view mirror, um, and it's just really, really nice to drive. Now I was talking about how Mercedes were known for quality and how the vehicles were known as real bomb proof vehicles. Now, one of the things that we haven't discussed is the engine. So it's 2.4 diesel. 90% um, of these vehicles had a diesel engine in them, um, probably because, you know, they were being used as absolute workhorses. And um, the engine was so good, in fact, that Sanyong have bought the rights to it. And uh, they're now putting it into vehicles that are being produced today. So for me, that's a real benchmark of quality that an engine that was designed so long ago is, you know, is still being bought by manufacturers and being put into good use. So I guess overall, if somebody said to me, how's your experience been of this today? I've got to put my little tradesman hat on. So for me, you know, as a daily vehicle would be absolutely hopeless. It wouldn't be something that I could use. But for a tradesman, I think it's a really, really good shout. And if you're a tradesman on a budget, I think this is definitely a vehicle you could consider now. You can still get parts, which is such an important criteria if you're looking to drive something on the daily um, it's really comfortable that seat is padded really well and then one of my favorite criteria for a vehicle it's got fantastic heating so I'm absolutely boiling and it is freezing today but it's been great it's nice to drive it's nice and comfortable it's not rattly it doesn't feel tinny it feels very well made the steering wheel's nice and sturdy your seating position is great and um, it just, in essence, feels like a very well-made vehicle that you can get a great example of for under a thousand pounds. I mean, this itself, I think, costs 650, which is absolutely nothing. So if you were a tradesman starting up and you needed a vehicle and you needed something quick, this is probably a really great shout. And it's so nice to take something like this out because, as I said at the start of the video, things like this, because they are vehicles that are just, you know, designed to be used rid of once they're you know once they're no good for the job things like this just don't last they're not like classic cars that people hide away in garages spaces at a premium people aren't going to keep stuff like this for you know a sunday jolly so it feels like a massive privilege to take it out and it's been really good fun to drive it's nearly time for me to hand the keys back to chris who owns the vehicle um so thank you very much chris for letting me drive this today because it's been absolutely hilarious and uh, I've had a really good time. Now if you're watching at home, uh, thank you very much for watching. It's been a very different thing to show you when I drive a classic. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you're taking all the health